I feel as if it's possible for us to join together and, and do big things and solve problems that have been lingering year after year, decade after decade. We've been talking about health care for decades now, and yet nothing happens. We've been talking about energy for decades, and yet we still are dependent on foreign oil. And so people want us to get things done. That's what they're looking for. And, and I know this because I've been in a conversation with the American people, and too often the stories I hear, just like Carrie's, are stories of struggle and stories of hardship. Everywhere I go across this country, I meet people who've been laid off after working 20 years in a plant because the job got shipped off overseas. Folks lose not just their job, but they lose their health care, they lose their pensions, and they're trying to figure out how can they make ends meet on $7 an hour working at the local fast food joint. All across this country, I meet individuals who don't have health care. All across this country, I meet seniors who are still trying to figure out how to get prescription medicine, having to take half a dose, even though the doctor tells them they can't do it because that's all they can afford. All across this country, I meet teachers who are working second jobs because they're not paid enough on the first. Or I, meet, or I meet teachers who are having to dig into their own pockets to buy school supplies for their classrooms yeah. because the schools yeah. are underfunded. <laughs> All across America, I meet mean, young people who are able and willing and have the grades to go to college, but just don't have the money. And if they borrow, they're, they're getting themselves into 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars worth of debt. They've got a mortgage before they even buy a house. And so there are a lot of young people who decide not even to go because they don't want to take on those, those debt loans. All across this country, I meet veterans who have served in Iraq and, and Afghanistan and are proud of their service, and rightfully so, because our troops have done everything that's been asked of them. They have performed magnificently. But they, they question the wisdom of a mission that has cost us so dearly in blood and treasure, and they think about those that have left, been left behind. And sometimes I meet veterans from Vietnam who are disabled, are homeless, who wonder how it is that the country could have forgotten their service. And sometimes in rope lines after a rally like this, I'll have to hug a mother who weeps silently over the memory of a fallen son or a fallen daughter. And all across this country, I meet people who are proud of their country, love America, but they don't understand how our standing in the world has declined so rapidly. And they are not proud of Abu Ghraib, and they're not proud of Guantanamo. They're ashamed of what's happened to our civil liberties. They don't understand how we could be talking about torture. They want our cherished values and ideals restored. And so the American people understand we have to bring about fundamental change. Not just